you're probably familiar with the popular Arduino board. Now the Arduino board is a very, very cheap low-end microprocessor unit, uh, which uh, you know has uh, you know 20 megahertz worth of processing power and a couple of K of RAM, and it, it's great for learning some electronics. Now Arduino has associated with it something called the Arduino IDE, the Arduino Integrated Development Environment. And using the Arduino IDE, you can very easily write what they call sketches. Others might call them programs, but the Arduino calls them sketches, which uh, you can then compile for the Arduino board, and then you can transfer that sketch over to the Arduino for execution. Now, the Arduino has been around for many years now, and there's a lot of pre-written libraries available for it. These libraries allow you to interact with a variety of electronics components without you having to go to the data sheet and try and study all the details of those components. Some smart folks have already built the libraries that you can leverage, that you can use in order to interact with those back-end components. What we're going to talk about in this tutorial is a new project available on GitHub called Piduino. And what Piduino allows you to do is use the Arduino IDE, the Arduino sketches, and the Arduino libraries that you can find on the internet and that are pre-supplied. And using those technologies, you can compile Arduino sketches for the Raspberry Pi. So let me say that again. You open up the Arduino IDE, you bring in a sketch, you compile the sketch, and the result is not a target for the Arduino, but instead the result is a target for any of the current Raspberry Pis. So with that in mind, let's start building this out and let's see how we can get that going. With our goals in mind, one of the first things we're going to want to do is to install the Arduino IDE for Windows. So we visit the uh, Arduino's IDE download web page, shown here. Uh, a Google on uh, Arduino IDE download will take us to here. And then we download the installer executable. So the installer, which I've already got down here, we then uh, open that and we'll now be walked through the wizard to install the Arduino IDE. I'll just walk us through this. We want to install all the components. Yes, we want to install it in the default place, C colon program files x86 Arduino. Yes, we hit next. It's now performing the installation. Doesn't take long. Then it will ask us if we want to install a USB driver. Yes, please. And the installation has completed. That's all there was to it. Now, on our desktop, we should now find an Arduino icon. We'll use that later to launch it. We're not ready to launch the Arduino IDE right now because we haven't got the uh, Piduino components installed. But if we open up another Windows Explorer, and change directory into our program files, Arduino uh, directory, and then into the hardware folder. This is where we're going to make our next set of changes. So that's going to be C colon program files x86 Arduino hardware. Now, one of the next things we're going to want to do is download the Piduino code itself. We're going to go to this URL, which is the URL for the GitHub repository for Piduino. We're going to click the Download Zip button, and that's going to download the Piduino zip file. And then we're finished with the browser. Now, here is our Piduino zip file. Now, we'll keep that to one side for right now. In our C colon program files, x86 Arduino hardware, we're going to create a new directory in here, and we're going to call that new directory Raspberry Pi. So we're starting the definition of our new server. So we go into the Raspberry Pi folder, and we see there's nothing in it because we just created it. Now we open up the 
Raspi Arduino master zip file. We drag out the content of that. We place that in this folder. And then we rename this to PyDuino. Okay, so that's that's as complicated as it gets. So in the hardware folder, we create a new folder called Raspberry Pi. In the Raspberry Pi folder, we extract the contents of the zip. We rename that to be PyDuino. And then in PyDuino, we have all of these parts here. So this is the installation of the PyDuino components. Our next step is the download of the tool chain responsible for building Raspberry Pi ARM-based binaries on a Windows machine. Because remember, our Arduino is running on the Windows environment. Our, rather, our Arduino IDE is running on the Windows environment. And our goal is to build an executables for the Raspberry Pi. So go to this URL which is the tool chains for the Raspberry Pi for Windows. Download the latest tool chain, which is this Raspberry GCC 492, yada, yada, yada. Notice it's 433 megabytes. That'll take a few minutes to download. Once it has downloaded, you will have an installer. So let's run through the installer. It, t it asks us, where do we want to install it? I'm going to leave it in this default directory. Uh, specify the path and hard links. I'm leaving everything as default. And then I hit the install button. And now it goes and installs the tool chain at this directory. And that'll take a few minutes to complete. Now that the installation has succeeded, we, we, uh, we've ended up with the situation where the uh, tool chain has been successfully installed and we have the binaries in their correct place. And we're going to make use of those in a few minutes inside the Arduino IDE. With the Raspberry Pi tool chain installed, we have one last task ahead of us. And that is to visit the directory where PyDuino is installed. By default, if you follow the instructions, that'll be C colon, program files x86, Arduino, hardware, Raspberry Pi, PyDuino. And in there, you'll find a file called platform.txt. Open that up with your favorite editor. And in platform.txt, you will find a line, line number five here, which is contains runtime tools toolchain.path. This is the directory where uh, the toolchain can be found. Now, this default isn't the right default for us. What we're going to do is we're going to copy the directory where we installed the toolchain, which will be C colon sys gcc raspberry. And we're going to replace that directory. I'm going to paste it in there. Change the slashes around from Windows to, to, uh, to Java and Linux. And that's it. So the runtime tools toolchain now points to this directory. OK, so with that change made, save this. And now we have our moment of truth. We can bring up the Arduino IDE. Up comes the tooling. We've got a sample sketch. We can go to our Tools menu. We specify the board is going to be Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi B plus slash 2 depending on your Raspberry Pi style. I'm using a, a Raspberry Pi uh, 2, version 2 here, but uh, depending on which kind of Raspberry Pi, the different ones will light up. To make sure all is working, we can uh, hit the Compile button. And if we hit the Compile button, we should find that everything compiles nice and cleanly. Uh, it says Done Compiling. Well, now we're going to build a sketch. So we're going to do something like, oh, I don't know, console.println. Uh, um, hello from startup. That looks good. And in our loop, 
we will do something like console.println um, hello from loop like this and that should be enough Oop. now we're going to save that so I'm going to save that as test uh, for video I don't know I've got to give it a name test for video so I've saved my sketch now I go to my uh, sketch menu export compiled binary now what that's doing is that is exporting the compiled sketch here as a binary file now if we go to that directory which I believe is documents Arduino test for video there it is we now have a binary file this is the compiled executable for this sketch which has been compiled for the Raspberry Pi so now if we open up uh, uh, a terminal on the Raspberry Pi I'm going to use the excellent mobile X term here I'm going to connect to my Raspberry Pi and there I am logged into my Raspberry Pi I'm going to go into I'm going to make a directory make their uh, video like this and I go into the refresh go into the videos folder let's see do I have a video yes go into the video folder and now I'm going to copy over this binary that was built on the Windows copy it over to here onto my uh, mobile X term binary place uh, change into the video folder there's my binary make it right uh, make it executable now it's executable and go ahead and run it run it and oh got to run it as root go ahead and run it and it says hello from loop run it again pipe it into more and it starts with hello from startup and hello from loop and again let's make some changes let's say Neil says hello recompile the tool by exporting the compiled binary it's rebuilding the sketch the sketch has been rebuilt we have a new version drag it and drop it onto the Arduino uh, I'm sorry not onto the Arduino onto the uh, onto the Raspberry Pi rerun it and now it's been recompiled to Neil says hello so look what we've done we have installed the Arduino IDE we've installed the tool chain for building Raspberry Pi executables on Windows we've downloaded the libraries from github for Piduino we integrated them all together just by moving some files around to the right places in our Arduino sketch environment we specified a uh, 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 we specified that the board would be the Raspberry Pi we modified a sketch we compiled it we saved it we ended up with a binary which is Raspberry Pi executable we copied that over to the Pi and then we're able to run it now imagine now that you can go into any of your Arduino sketches and modify those sketches or compile those sketches when you compile them the code that's generated is compiled for the Raspberry Pi and it can trivially be moved to the Raspberry Pi and executed you can download or you can obtain all your favorite sketches all the samples will work all the libraries will work so everything that you can do on an Arduino environment you can now do on the Raspberry Pi environment well I hope you found this video useful in the link you're seeing on the screen right now you will find a link to a book on the Raspberry Pi and in that book you will find this tutorial written up with a lot more additional reference material so I do encourage you to download the book that is linked to on your screen again I hope you found this useful and I'm going to look forward to making more of these tutorials in the weeks and months to come thank you now bye bye